What's up, YouTubers? It's Ernie, Blur Without Fear, and we are going to pick up with The Button Part 2, which covers Batman Rebirth number 22 and Flash Rebirth number 22. And once again, if you're not familiar with what The Button is or its significance in DC Rebirth, it's pretty much a prelude, kind of a, uh, kind of a primer, you know, just something to get you warmed up for Doomsday Clock. Which is going to be like the next big DC Comics event. So before we get started, if you have any ideas for comics you'd like me to make a video about, sound off in the comments. And if this is your first time checking out my channel, consider clicking subscribe so you can become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers and tap that bell button so you can become part of the notification squad. So the button, we're getting back into it. So during the event of Flashpoint, it became very clear that if you know, everything was one, if Flash could somehow go back and fix what he messed up with time, everything would go back to normal, the Flashpoint timeline would cease to exist, and the world would just go back to being the way that it was. Well, much like conversations that Jay Garrick has had with Flash in the comics and on the CW TV show, you can't break something and then put it back together and expect for it to not show any cracks which is how you get the new 52. The Flashpoint universe didn't cease to exist. It kept on going. As we find out when Bruce Wayne gets to meet Thomas Wayne of Flashpoint face to face, we find out that someone is keeping this timeline on life support. Someone is making it go on. And the reasons that they're keeping it open we don't know, but it's safe to assume that it all has to do with the Flash and Batman going to Flashpoint and learning some information. Another thing we learned that's still carrying over from Flashpoint is the war that was waged between Aquaman and Wonder Woman and their respective cultures. Well, come to find out, the only thing they hated more than each other is Thomas Wayne. So they've now banded together and allied their forces to take Thomas Wayne out. Which kind of seems like overkill if you ask me, but I mean, yeah. Do you really need, you know, Atlanteans and Amazons to take out Batman? I mean, it's not even one of the Nightmare Batman from Dark Knight's Metal, but you know, whatever. I guess if you want something done right, you send everybody. It's really cool in this issue because Bruce Wayne finally gets to meet Thomas Wayne. And it's a really interesting moment because at first, Thomas Wayne doesn't believe that Bruce Wayne is real. Like, he, there's just no way he can wrap his mind around it. Like, it took him a long time and Flashpoint to come to grips with the idea that there was another timeline where his son lived and he died and it, it took a while for him to unpack that but <laughs> but eventually he comes around and he starts to understand what's going on once Barry Allen and Bruce Wayne get a chance to calm Thomas Wayne down Bruce Wayne and Thomas finally get a chance to bond I thought that was a really good moment yeah especially while Flash is fixing the cosmic treadmill but you know anything like this couldn't last long because as soon as the Atlanteans and the Amazons show up, we learn that whoever was keeping Flashpoint alive has suddenly decided to take it off life support. And all of a sudden, it's almost like, a, it kind of reminds you of when the Earths were being destroyed in Crisis on Infinite Earths, that uh, you know, this huge white light is just like, overtaking everything and destroying everything it touches. It's something very similar and maybe even the exact same thing. We don't know, but I mean the destruction because in this case it's not an earth that's being destroyed, it's a timeline. So, yeah, either way, it's still very similar. Once both Batman fend off the Amazons and the Atlanteans, it gives the Flash time enough to fix the treadmill and once he does, they get to have one last parting moment. The Flash kicks off the cosmic treadmill and starts opening up the passageway into the Speed Force. Bruce reaches back to get Thomas Wayne to come with him in a moment where you're like dude this is dude this would be an awesome opportunity dude bring Thomas Wayne over into you know the DC Rebirth I would love that comic <laughs> I would read the shit out of that comic but Thomas Wayne isn't going he shoves Batman away into the speed force Thomas Wayne tells the Flash that remember when you came here originally you promised me you'd save my son so you make sure you do it right now and he even looks to Bruce and tells him don't be Batman live your life be happy be a father to your son don't do it for me. Don't do it for Martha. Do it for yourself. You don't have to be Batman anymore. Let Batman end with me. And dude, that is a powerful moment. Like, I mean, I'm talking like hyper powerful, man. It actually kind of brought a tear to my eye. I won't lie. Uh, <laughs> as he does this, he pulls his mask back down and he runs head first into the destruction of the timeline. And it's just 
dude, man, it is... Man, it's something else. <laughs> but as Batman and The Flash are racing back through the Speed Force, trying to find out what happened to Eobar Thawne, come to find out, they catch up with him. Only, they catch up with Eobar Thawne before he actually made it to, you know, Quotey Fingers God and was destroyed. They actually find him somehow, like, it's like some kind of weird time stream slip or something. But they end up catching up with him. And they try to get him to slow down because they're, Barry's trying to warn him that you are running to your death. But of course, being the reverse Flash, being the egomaniac that he is, he doesn't care. In fact, he thinks that whatever is waiting on the other side of this you know, speed force portal is not strong enough to withstand him. The cosmic treadmill gets destroyed and it throws both Batman and the Flash off course, giving the reverse Flash time to get free and then get to his destination. And when he does, you can see that at first he still has that same smarmy attitude but once he kind of gets a long look at whatever it is that he sees before him, he slowly starts to realize that, oh, I better humble myself. And then it even quickly becomes fear. And before you know it, we see the reverse Flash doing something we never really see him do before. He starts begging for his own life. But it's too late. He is destroyed. And we find him in much the same way that... Flash found him when he came to the Batcave to rescue Batman. He's blasted with a powerful force of energy that destroys one half of his body, killing him. But the Flash and Batman have more important things to worry about because our narrator for this comic book, we don't, we, you can kind of, if you look at the cover, you can pretty much get a good idea that the person that's been talking is a speedster and is a character that we're very familiar with. Well, as Batman and the Flash are falling into the Speed Force and facing potential death or at the very least an eternity trapped in the Speed Force, we see Jay Garrick, the original Flash, come bursting out of the Speed Force and he grabs a hold of both Batman and the Flash and just brings them back in out of the Speed Force, saving their lives and in some way saving himself. The thing that's funny about this is that Jay Garrick apparently has been trapped in the Speed Force since before the New 52. Not unlike original recipe Wally West. Like, we're not entirely sure exactly how long he's been trapped in the Speed Force at this point, or if it was willing, or what happened to him. But whatever the case is, Barry doesn't remember who he is. Like, he knows that he recognizes him from somewhere, but he just can't place him. Now, the one good thing about this is that unlike Wally West, He's actually able to communicate a little bit better uh, when he comes out of the Speed Force and he tells him, he's like, my name is Jay Garrick and I'm your friend. He even tells him, he's like, I didn't kill Eobar Thawne, I wasn't the one who did it. And he begs the Flash to remember him, he's like, please, if you remember me the way you did Wally, I can come back. And much like Wally West in the DC Rebirth one shot, whenever he doesn't get someone to remember who he is, he's blasted back into the Speed Force, and that's exactly what happens. One of the things I really liked about seeing Jay Garrick in this issue, we kind of get a moment where Howard Porter's art really portrays Jay Garrick in the same likeness as John Wesley Shipp from the CW Arrow show. I thought that was a really nice touch, especially when you consider the fact that John Wesley Shipp played the original Flash back in the day in like the uh, late 80s, early 90s series. So after everything dies down, Bruce Wayne and Barry Allen are sitting outside Wayne Manor next to Martha and Thomas Wayne's graves, and they're trying to unpack everything that just happened, and even where Batman doesn't know what to do about this, and they're starting to wonder if maybe they've hit a dead end. All Batman seems to understand is that there was no coincidence. Another thing that's a really interesting touch in this, Bruce Wayne is sitting in Wayne Manor, and the bat signal comes up, and he's remembering the words of Thomas Wayne saying, don't be Batman, live your life, actually be a full and complete person. And when the bat signal goes up, he just stares at it and doesn't respond and even hangs his head low. Even Alfred's like, are you going to answer that? Are you going to go out? And he just sits there, is rendered speechless. And, it's, and this actually leads into another arc that's happening in DC Rebirth, which just, you know, in Batman's own personal story arc where he's, you know, kind of wrestling with the idea, you know, what to do about being Batman. But uh, it's not all done there. We go back to the button that was left behind by Eobard Thawne when he was killed. 
you can still see the matter from Eobar Thon's body like falling to the ground. And before we know it, a blue hand reaches down and picks up the button. And the words being uttered are very, very Dr. Manhattan. And I mean, there's no doubt that this is Dr. Manhattan here. It's it's still his cadence. It's still like his way of speaking, talking about how, you know, everything is preordained and we're all puppets and he's just a puppet who can see the strings. And that's not even really 100% the end of it because in the epilogue, which you would think that would be the way they would end it, but you know, whatever. They kind of give you this very weird epilogue where we see the button yet again and there's you know some blood splattering down to it and as it zooms in on the blood it pulls back and we start to see the shield of superman the the crest of superman the big s we see that and it looks like it's been damaged which makes me wonder whether or not you know we're getting back the new 52 superman or yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but it's, like I said, it's pretty interesting. I, I know by this particular point that, you know, there's this, you know, very mysterious character. I haven't really read much of Action Comics, but I've kind of heard rumblings about things going on with it. I know that there is a character named Mr. Oz, and I technically already know who he actually is, but uh, I'm not going to talk about it right here, right now, because I do plan to do a video on it uh, here shortly, sometime in the next, you know, couple of weeks, but, you know, just depending on how everything's going there's a lot of videos i gotta you know drop so we're gonna try and get to all of it but long story short mr oz has captured doomsday and has him at his disposal and mr oz is supposed to factor very heavily into doomsday clock supposedly and superman as well so maybe what we're seeing is a taste of things to come is superman gonna die again uh like what's going on here i don't know it's it, it's all theories rumors and speculation let me know what you guys think about the button and what may or may not be coming sound off in the comments if you enjoyed this video click the like button and if you want to see more awesome videos like this one click subscribe so you can become one of earth's mightiest subscribers and tap that bell button so you can become part of the notification squad once again thank you for taking the time to watch this video and i'll see you next time plus ultra